If you are a dinosaur alone in a forest and you hear this sound, you should fear for your life. Imagine a sound so low and powerful it could be felt in your chest before you even heard it clearly. It was likely the kind of sound that made prey animals instinctively panic, a biological warning. You are not the hunter, you are being hunted. But if you think it is announcing itself with a loud grumble, I have to tell you that it was far more disturbing than that. One of the most overlooked aspects of Tyrannosaurus rex was its ability to move quietly despite its enormous size. Anatomical studies suggest it had soft tissue structures in its feet that absorbed shock, much like modern elephants. Combined with long strides and efficient muscle control, this made T. rex capable of moving with surprising stealth. For prey animals, that meant a nine-ton predator could approach without warning, and by the time you noticed, it was already too late. But silence was just one part of its hunting arsenal. Tyrannosaurus rex also had exceptional eyesight. Unlike many reptiles, it had forward-facing eyes, giving it strong binocular vision and excellent depth perception, comparable to or even better than that of modern raptors like eagles. This allowed it to detect movement precisely and lock onto targets from far away. Add to that its extraordinary sense of smell. The olfactory bulbs in its brain were proportionally huge, meaning T-Rex could detect scent trails, blood, or carcasses over vast distances. It could track wounded or hiding prey with ease, a walking biological sensor system designed to locate life. And once it struck, there was no escape. The bite force of Tyrannosaurus rex was unmatched among land animals, capable of delivering up to 12 tons of pressure. This wasn't just enough to kill, it was enough to crush bones completely. Its teeth were thick, serrated, and banana-sized, not built for slicing delicately, but for shattering whatever they sank into. Armor, thick bones, or size offered little protection. A single bite could disable or kill instantly. What makes Tyrannosaurus rex even more unsettling is the growing evidence that it may not have always hunted alone. While long believed to be a solitary predator, fossil trackways and bone beds suggest that juveniles may have occasionally moved or fed in groups. This opens the possibility of coordinated hunting behavior, not in tightly organized packs like wolves, but still enough to overwhelm prey. A group of fast, agile young rexes pushing herds toward an adult? That's a level of threat far beyond a lone attacker. Wandering alone in the late Cretaceous was one of the riskiest things a dinosaur could do, especially in areas where Tyrannosaurus rex roamed. Without the protection of a herd, your chances of survival dropped dramatically. There were no early warning calls, no group defense, and no distractions to slow a predator down. Alone meant exposed, vulnerable. When it struck, it didn't need multiple attempts. You wouldn't be able to outrun it, outmaneuver it, or fight back. Being alone meant you had no defense, no support, and no escape. Coming face to face with a Tyrannosaurus rex under those conditions wasn't just dangerous, it was a death sentence. What could a vulnerable dinosaur do when confronted by a Tyrannosaurus rex? In short, very little, but not absolutely nothing. If a small or medium-sized dinosaur found itself alone and face-to-face -face with a Tyrannosaurus rex, its options were extremely limited, but a few survival strategies might have offered a slim chance. The best strategy was to run, immediately and unpredictably. Some prey dinosaurs, like hadrosaurs and ornithomimids, had strong legs and could reach decent speeds. If they spotted Tyrannosaurus rex from far enough away, they might have been able to escape before it got close. Sudden zigzag movements, like those seen in some modern prey animals, may have made them harder to track visually. The key point is, escape only worked if the dinosaur had a head start. If the T-Rex got too close, running was useless. The other thing you could do is running into forests, rocky areas, or uneven ground because it may have slowed T-Rex down. Although it was fast, its large size limited its ability to maneuver in tight spaces. 
A smaller, more agile dinosaur might have used obstacles to dodge or hide so terrain could be a temporary advantage, but it didn't guarantee safety. Some prey dinosaurs had physical defenses, horns, tail clubs, spikes, or thick armor. If escape wasn't possible, they may have tried to stand their ground and bluff, appearing larger, swinging tails, or using displays to intimidate. Against a determined T-Rex, these defenses might buy time, but rarely stopped it completely. Some modern animals avoid predators by freezing, but against a T-Rex, staying still likely didn't help much, unless the predator wasn't already focused on the target. The most interesting question now is, who lived in Tyrannosaurus rex territory and had to survive it? T-Rex lived during the late Cretaceous period, around 68-66 million years ago, mainly in what is now Western North America. Several herbivorous and smaller omnivorous dinosaurs lived in the same ecosystems, and many of them were likely on the T-Rex menu. Among the most vulnerable were hadrosaurs like Edmontosaurus, large plant eaters that often lived in herds but were relatively unprotected when isolated. Ceratopsians such as Triceratops also roamed the region. While they had horns and frills for defense, fossil evidence shows they regularly clashed with T-Rex and were not always successful. Even the heavily armored Ankylosaurs, like Ankylosaurus, weren't completely safe. Their tail clubs offered protection, but T-Rex's bone-crushing bite could still overpower them under the right conditions. Juvenile dinosaurs of nearly any species were especially at risk, being smaller, slower, and easier to catch. Finally, smaller theropods like Ornithomimus and Truton likely lived in constant avoidance of the apex predator, knowing that one mistake could be fatal. Any dinosaur, big or small, armored or unarmored, that lived in late Cretaceous North America had to be constantly aware of the possibility of encountering a T-Rex. Herds and group behavior were often the only effective defense, because once you were alone, you were just meat on two legs. When a T-Rex caught its victim, it didn't waste time. The process was fast, brutal, and efficient. Once it bit down, it likely shook its head violently to rip chunks of flesh and bone from the body. This puncture and pull method is supported by damage patterns seen in fossilized bones, including deep gouges, crushed ribs, and shattered vertebrae. Unlike many modern predators, T-Rex ate bone as well as flesh. Its powerful jaws and strong stomach acids meant it could digest the entire body. Bones, tendons, organs, everything. This made kills highly efficient and left little waste behind. If the prey was small, death was probably immediate. One bite could crush the skull or spine. With larger animals like Triceratops, the attack might have taken longer, involving multiple bites and a struggle. But the end result was the same. Once caught, there was virtually no escape. But is there a comparison that comes very close to a T-Rex attack? Imagine you're suddenly grabbed by an industrial hydraulic press the size of a car with the power to crush a truck chassis in one motion. That's the bite force a T-Rex could deliver, strong enough to shatter solid bone like dry twigs, not just once, but over and over again with each massive jaw snap. Now add the teeth, each one the size of a banana, but serrated like a steak knife, embedded in a skull longer than a grown man is tall. The way it handled prey is often compared to how modern crocodiles treat theirs. Grab, crush, shake violently, and tear pieces off. But T-Rex was doing this with 5x the power, to animals the size of cars. And in some cases, it could consume bone and all. So yeah, we should be deeply grateful that the reign of this monster ended 66 million years ago. Being caught alone by a Tyrannosaurus rex was one of the worst-case scenarios in the Cretaceous world. Most isolated dinosaurs became easy targets, especially if they were young, slow, or injured. Those with speed, agility, or a clever use of terrain had a tiny window of hope. Still, the most effective survival strategy by far was simple. Never be alone in Tyrannosaurus rex territory. It almost every time ends deadly. We really hope you enjoyed this video. You could really help this channel out by giving it a like. And if you like to see sorts of videos like this, feel free to subscribe. Hope we see you in the next video. Stay fascinated.